Buddy, uh, thank you everyone for joining Communications for Startups and building a successful communications and PR strategy. Um, for those of you not familiar with uh, Launch New York, David, our wonderful project manager, is going to give a quick introduction. Um, some of you may be familiar with David, and then some people who have not heard of Launch. Um, but David is going to give a quick introduction. So go ahead, David. Thank you. Some some of you may have heard of me and still not know who I am. So it's a good opportunity to. Uh... To run through a little bit. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, welcome, everybody. It should be a fun event. Uh, as I said, great to see so many familiar faces and some new ones that maybe I haven't seen before. So glad to have you all. Uh, just a real quick intro for anybody who might be new to Launch New York. There's a chance to kind of give a quick overview uh, or reminder for everybody. So we are a nonprofit venture development organization, VDO. Uh, and what that means is we are not affiliated with the state. We are not affiliated with any businesses. We are here just to serve you guys and to help grow the economy of uh, the western half of upstate New York. Uh, and we, our goal is basically to help grow businesses, get uh, jobs and wealth built in the area. And we do that, as uh, many of you know, by focusing on helping the high growth startups uh, and you know, potential for uh, the types of companies that are looking for investment and need to grow fast. Uh, so we try to aim to fill that gap and help get um, mentorship to those companies that need it, and also uh, the opportunity to apply for seed funding. Oftentimes, it's super hard for uh, early stage startups, especially, to get their their first uh, bit of seed funding. So we like to uh, to help that, give you a boost, um, you know, go through the mentorship program and, and vet our company so that we can help uh, be the first ones to give you some money and also. Uh, connect you with other investors as well. So um, that's in the form of investments. Uh, we're also actually doing a uh, webinar in March where we're gonna explain a lot more detail about how Launch New York funding works uh, through convertible debt notes. So we will be uh, reaching out, I'll be reaching out to give you some more information on about that coming up. But uh, as uh, you can see on the slide here from Jackie, uh, we've been busy in the last, uh, I think eight years since uh, we've been around. And a lot of startups have kind of gone through, gotten mentorship from us and, uh, and grown and moved forward. And we do have, uh, I think it's actually 67 uh, companies in the portfolio. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but uh, we are continuing to make investments for uh, the uh, most active seed fund in New York State, uh, as you can see, about two to four investments every month. So we try to work with as many companies as we can to help you guys move forward. Um, if anybody uh, has questions, if you don't know me, please just reach out uh, at any time. I'll put my uh, email in the chat. Uh, but uh, as the uh, program manager, I'm here to help the companies move through mentorship and get to the applications for investment. Uh, so, Jackie, I'll, I'll turn it back to you and let you uh, continue on. Great. Thank you, David. Um, so now I'm going to introduce our presenter, Otto Paul. Um, with his background in entrepreneurship and communications, Otto brings strategic vision to communications and PR for early stage startups. Uh, he began his career at the New York Times, and he has also written for publications including New York Magazine, uh, Scientific American, and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he has held numerous senior positions at tech startups and founded several of his own. More recently, he ha was head of communications at several startups before becoming a full-time startup communication consultant. And with that, I will turn it over to Otto. Awesome, thank you. Um, I let me share my screen here. Hold on, I'm gonna continue. See how this, uh, see how that works. If you all can see a bridge, and then I'm going to get my presenter view. I think that should do it. Um, all right, can you all see uh, the the title screen? Yeah, it looks good. I don't. Good. Yep. Awesome. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, um, uh, Jackie and David, for that introduction. I'm excited to be here today. Um, it's an exciting uh, project and, 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 and day, and I see it was a great turnout. Uh, and a bunch of you wrote back and gave me some information about your companies, and I'm going to try to uh, touch on every uh, company that reached out to me, at least to give some kind of a little bit of a direct feedback and kind of tie you into some of the larger themes that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and uh, so I'm going to move pretty fast uh, just because I got a lot to cover and I know there's like, you know, 15 or 20 companies that I want to mention uh, and give some feedback to. So I can move quite quickly. Uh, if you have something burning you want to like put in the chat, that's awesome. Otherwise, I'll try to uh, move and then we can have some time at the end uh, where we can have some some questions. So um, let me uh, see if I can advance this. Yep. Okay. So the background, right? So as Jackie mentioned, right, I started out as a journalist. Uh, then I was an entrepreneur, had a, a couple of companies. Uh, more recently than I combined those two things was head of communications for uh, startups. Now I consult and mend. 
Um, I am, I went to Cornell, uh, so I, in fact, I'm a native Ithacan, uh, born and raised in Ithaca, uh, and then migrated up the hill to Cornell, uh, and later went uh, to Stanford Business School. Um, so, but the real point is that I'm, I want to be a resource to you guys. I'm happy to chat. Um, you all should have my email from this, um, and then also, uh, you can also visit my website. Uh, you see some articles, sign up for the newsletter, so you get the newest ones and all that. So, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you guys, um, you know, that's why I'm here. Um, so, uh, all right. So now, um, there we go. Okay. So, so, so I asked uh, you all to tell me kind of like, what was the, really the most burning issue that you guys had? Uh, and it sort of fell into a couple of buckets here. Just a couple of the quotes that I got from you guys, right? It's like, get the word out, like reach my target audience, raise money, um, uh, customers. And I, and there's one I want to touch on later. I, you know, I use the help, like I use the word term work-life balance and the New York times just came out with an article saying balance is a myth. Like, what do I do? Right? Like when you start getting some, some press that isn't, um, uh, maybe directly, uh, towards you, but sort of attacking the sort of this fundamental pitch of your, of, of your company, you know, what do you do? So uh, with that in mind, um, uh, the, 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 oh, yeah, the framework is that, you know, your company, when you start talking, when you start talking about your company, there's sort of multiple phases that you go through, right? You have your sort of first ideas, you sort of kick them around. Um, uh, then you sort of build a pitch deck. Maybe at first it's a friends and family. Maybe it's, um, uh, it's some angel investors, who knows? And then as you start sort of addressing the outside world, right, typically these days, your website's going to be your go-to next thing. And that's a real opportunity for you to um, start to um, uh, sort of crystallize uh, what, your, what your thoughts are and, and what your pitch is really to the outside world. And there's a, most of you are at that stage where you really still need to figure out what that core issue is, um, how you're presenting yourself, um, who are the constituencies that you're speaking about. A lot of sometimes there's some, uh, those raise some business issues that we need to get back to. Um, and then the next step, obviously, then you launch, right? So now you want to make sure that there's buzz. You, you, you got your business out there. Maybe you're selling some stuff. You have some revenue, but you need to start getting the word out, get more customers, et cetera. And then later, sort of, you hit cruising altitude, and that's a point where you're building, you know, sort of out, sort of permanent um, uh, assets and, and and capabilities in the sort of PR and communications world. We're really going to be focusing on website. Have a little bit about launch, um, just to kind of, because in a way, it kind of sets your um, uh, just going through that will help uh, put you into the right mindset for, uh, you know, how you should be building that um, uh, the website. Now, one thing I want to mention, I will mention, obviously, a bunch of the companies, everyone except for those who asked me not to, um, uh, the companies on this call, um, please take my critiques uh, in, in sort of in, in, in good spirits. Uh, don't take them the wrong way. Um, I, I, maybe I misinterpreted something uh, and I got it wrong. And, you know, if so, forgive me. Um, but also know that if I got it wrong by looking at your website, you know, maybe there's also a problem in the website that would have corrected my mistake. So uh, I just want to put that out there um, uh, for, for, for right now. Um, all right. So then it keeps, uh, okay. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to, first we're going to go through, and I guess I was hungry when I made this deck for you guys. So um, it's, uh, uh, it's a bit of a food theme here, but the first thing and most important thing is getting these sort of ingredients right for messaging, right? A lot of people jump in and say, Hey, I need to get more customers. And I look at the website and I'm like, there's some fundamental stuff that we need to get straight here. Maybe there's some business questions that it raises. Maybe there's some sort of fundamental messaging issues, like what really is the core functionality and benefit of your product? What is the, what's the problem that you're solving? Like some of those things need to be either clarified for yourself internally, or need to even be, um, need to be uh, just spoken about, you know, more clearly. And then you want to get obviously your pieces uh, ready for your PR outreach so that you have the stuff in place. And then uh, we're going to start talking about some ideas that you're going to want to uh, think about uh, as you start to actually start trying to generate PR for, for your company. Um, all right. So then just to come right in. So in that sort of ingredients uh, uh, sort of category, first, we're going to have, I want to go through a couple of your companies where I feel there's some business issues that need to be clarified. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the messaging pieces. Uh, and then how do we put that into the website? Uh, and I'm going to address that also in terms of the funnel that you're expecting your customers to go through, because um, the website is always a key part of that. Um, and, and, and sometimes um, it's not quite um, uh, sort of clarified uh, most appropriately. Okay, so let, health and your time is the first of the companies that I want to talk about. So this is a <clears throat> we connect health uh, experts at a time and can, method that's convenient to you. 
So I think this is basically just a proof of concept website. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the website structure per se, but I will just want to say that, uh, and we've all been at this point. So some of your companies are obviously well further along, but it's always worth mentioning is that um, this is like a basically obviously great idea, right? The idea like why isn't everything else like you know, everything else is done on online marketplace? Why not healthcare? Well, I would push you and say like, okay, clearly um, it is an obviously good idea, but so good that a lot of other people are doing it. So you're going to need some kind of an angle. You're going to need some kind of an in. What is the sort of special angle that you're bringing to this market? What are you doing that other people aren't doing? Um, and those, as you start to go through those business questions, it will, the messaging will then emerge from that. So if you're like, oh, well, all we do is maybe it's geographically bounded, or we only focus on a specific disease, or we focus on a certain insurance carrier, or we focus on, on working with companies or whatever your angle is on that market, that's what's where your messaging is gonna come from. So it's in a way, way too early to talk about messaging. There's really kind of a fundamental business question that this website as presented to me right now still raises. Um, the uh, uh, on the next page, um, they sort of explain, oh, we, you know, we're like Uber connecting a rider to a driver. And these are the kinds of things I would just say, hey, careful, um, you know, the, the healthcare is different from, you know, hitching a taxi ride. Um, I get that sort of there's a there's a structural similarity, but that's not how a customer would see it. So um, as you work through that, be careful of the type of language that you use. And one thing that you might want to do as you start to hone in on um, developing a concept like this, you're like, hey, this is a great idea. We should do this. Start to think through it. Look at the other companies that are out there doing it. Um, there's a ton of companies that are already working on, um, on, on sort of ma online matching of, of healthcare providers. Um, Talkspace is one of them, very large in the therapy space. Um, and this gives you a bit of a, a, a sense of how they're going at it. And, and we're going to get to this in a second. But they're doing a couple of things also very right. Um, in terms of um, uh, in terms of their headline uh, addressing uh, who um, uh, wh what the benefit is that the user gets um, the social um, the kind of verification join over a million users um, the, the, the 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 eye contact um, the insurance list which is you know addressing a few um, kind of maybe unspoken um, kind of objections maybe forming in your customers minds oh how will I pay for this so they're doing a number of things right and like copy you know this isn't you know we're not uh, you know we're not grading you on on originality here we're grading you on whether you make a successful business so look at what other people have done um and uh, and focus on that um and then the next one you can as you scroll through the talk space site you can see like they how they present it and the like so um there's uh these are the kinds of things that are going to give you tips they're also going to give you ideas for maybe what they're not doing which is going to give you um differentiation um, there's another company, Lyra Health, uh, which I know, uh, and they focus on servicing um, employees of companies. So they become a, a benefit, essentially, provider to the HR department. And that's how they go after it. So think all that through. Um, there's another company here, Viking Smart Slot. So cool idea, right? The idea is you can put a hole in your garage door and you get your packages delivered that way. That way the, the porch pirates don't come and steal your, um, your Amazon box. Um, you know, again, good idea, but I, I immediately the way it's presented to me, lots of questions around, um, around business questions before I can even get to messaging questions, right? You've got this, uh, this idea for this delivery slot. Um, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the question from the founder was, how do I improve this site for pre-orders? But I'm still totally unclear on actually who is the customer. Is this am I? Is the consumer supposed to buy that and install it in his door? Are you going to partner with garage door companies? I know that Amazon already has in garage delivery where they get the. In fact, I have it here on my uh, a garage where uh, they get the code and they can just open and close my garage door when they're going to deliver a package. So, would you be partnering with an Amazon? Are you going to partner with UPS? Um, uh, so there's a lot of questions that I have around what the fundamental business is, and maybe those questions are already answered, but if so, those are the first things that need to be discussed in order to figure out even what is the messaging, um, you know, before you talk about how it's, you know, manufactured into new or retrofitted into garage doors, the question is, well, those are two very different channels to go after, um, you know, what are you doing? And there was message uh, talk of an app somewhere on the, uh, on the website. And so maybe it's an app based service. So there's a lot of questions that you need to get to. Um, and then obviously you can start talking about the, the, the communications part. Um, Here's another site, uh, a company further along. Uh, the website in many ways looks great, a company called Veravend. So um, a, um, uh, 
they they do a lot of things on um, but sort of the uh, best way to sim simplify it I think was um, uh, it's sort of a way of companies to vet each other um, and they because this company starts to build this entire um, uh, sort of credit network uh, which is obviously great um, but I had to pull that out of the website as I was flipping through it and those again that first messaging when I see the fastest and most secure way for businesses to transact, I'm thinking, okay, this is some kind of a, um, like in, um, uh, like a cryptography thing, maybe that, that, that some of the security, my, my currently my business transactions are unsecure. I need to make them secure, um, uh, which actually isn't, or is certainly only a small part of it. Um, the, below that, it talks about instant contactless, you know, payment. So I think maybe it's a visa, you know, business visa type uh, uh, payment rail, which it isn't. It's more of a credit rating replacement based on cash flow underwriting, if I if I understood this correctly. So um, th this company has a lot of things going on, and I think that um, again, there's some. I had some business questions first before I could really even sort of come up with messaging for it. For example, when I click on sign up today, which I think is kind of too, you know, I don't even know who the customer really is, and I'm already asked to sign up. I, I'm asked to sign up. I'm already asked to create a pa an account with a password, which I think is, um, you know, kind of putting the cart before the horse. Um, and uh, and then as I explore further, I get even more conf confused. Now there's um, uh, there's almost a, a, a digital accountant uh, software uh, play going on. Um, so I'm unclear as to what the business is. And obviously, as a you, that's the last thing you want. You want to figure out who is your customer. Again, maybe all these questions are already answered, but you need to figure out. Who is the customer, and how are you going to get? Um, and 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 how are you going to address what's their problem, and how are you going to answer it? Um, and one thing I'll add to this, just from a from a strategic perspective, is that um, if this is a company where you are going to provide um, uh, sort of verification services, like the idea is, oh, if every company signs up, and and therefore you have a good sense of their credit rating, and then I join, and I'm like, hey, can I use this, you know, plumber? And, the, and you guys can say, oh yeah, he has a score of 82, he should be good. Those networks are hard to build, incredibly valuable if you can build them, hard to build. Um, and so one way of going at this might be, um, uh, you know, so it's the sort of come for the single player game, stay for the network approach, which some companies use where you offer a service like maybe digital accounting, and that's all you talk about for now until you get 10,000 companies signed on for your digital accounting service. And then you say, well, great, now I can like actually like, I have enough people to put into that network. So I can go and um, uh, sort of turn on that network now that you're here. That's just how, for example, even Instagram got started. Instagram was, you know, photo filters um, and it was like free photo filters. And the idea was um, uh, you just, you know, do them and then you can post it on Facebook or you can post it on, you know, you can send it by email, but oh, but by the way, if you want, you can also share these photos right here on Instagram. Um, so again, the, 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 um, the immediate sort of, single person service was actually what they led with. And then, then that became a network, obviously very valuable. So, um, so, so those are some of the examples of that sort of some fundamental issues that either need to be resolved or at least verbally clarified before you can start talking about what the messaging should be. Um, there's another group of companies here um, that uh, I think would really benefit from um, a, a stronger founder story. Um, and I should add that, I, you know, every company can benefit from a strong founder story. Some, I think, are going to be more clearly and obviously um, uh, sort of founder story centric. Uh, and, and, and typically, we market companies, we try to talk about um, uh, what is the, the, you know, what's our product? Like, oh, our product is better, it's faster, it's cheaper, it's cooler, it's safer, whatever it might be. Um, and then you sort of later sort of get to like, you know, that's a why you should buy it. Um, and there's this great thing, and you should Google this guy, Simon Sinek, who uh, if you just Google Golden Circle Apple, you'll come up with his TED Talk, and it's all very smart. Uh, the summary of it is, is that if you turn that around, you often you can get real um, uh, sort of evangelists for your product, right? So, um, uh, so as opposed to just saying, hey, we're a great technology company and our products are better and uh, faster, you know, do you want one? You say, hey, you know, we're tackling the world's problems. We believe we can conquer cancer, whatever. We're doing this to, um, the way we're doing this is to make this better, simpler and faster service. And, and that's why we make this great product. You know, do you want to join us? You know, suddenly it becomes like a movement you're being swept aboard. 
And so um, uh, that is uh, something that, again, everyone can benefit from. I want to talk through a few uh, examples where I think that uh, uh, you should focus on that sooner rather than later. Um, they're all three, they're all food companies, by the way, so, or at least um, dog food in this case. Um, so uh, here's an example of a, uh, of a, of a, of a, like, so um, dog treat company. And, um, uh, you know, it's a great photo. The headline's obviously wrong, like confidence. I mean, that's, a, that's not really the first thing. It's like, I'm not like I'm unconfident about buying dog food um, and, you know, shopping and comfort. Those are probably not, I'm just going to guess those are really core benefits that you're providing, right? It's organic. It's all natural. It's, you know, mom made or whatever it is, right? It's, it's much more of a touchy feely thing. Um, and then on the next, on the carousel, the next thing, you know, I've become an owner for as little as a hundred. And I have no idea whether I'm buying shares in the company. Am I buying, buying that dog? Am I buying, what am I buying? Um, uh, again, you want to go with those, uh, with those uh, dog treats and you want to go with that personal story. There's some stuff in here, which was awesome. Um, although in the, our story, it keeps talking about I and my inspiration, and it never explains who that I is. When you get to the, um, there's some videos, and they're quite beautiful, actually. Um, I, the founder appears to be a woman named Jackie Lovern, um, and, uh, uh, and, and she's, uh, you know, talks quite nice, lovely about how she's doing this and why she's doing this and the dog she has, and you start getting that personal story. Like, People are when they're buying dog treats, especially sort of gourmet, higher end stuff, right? They're 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 buying a story, and so you need to give them that. You don't need to give them War and Peace. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, going with the like oh, sort of like the mom thing, and oh, maybe your dog was sick or getting older, and you needed to keep him healthy or whatever it is. I mean, it, it, stuff has been done before, but that's really where um, uh, you know where that comes from. I see that uh, Jackie and, and this company already has 23,000 Instagram followers. So you guys are doing something right. Um, and you, you're gonna, and those are the types of uh, marketing that is gonna be far more important here. Um, because again, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a daily luxury impulse purchase. Um, and, uh, and, and you need to sell that human aspect. Um, and, and that needs to be developed on this website. I'd say the same thing is exactly right for Empower. This is a beauty product company. Um, there's this odd pop-up um, right at the open when you, when you go to the website before you even see the product, um, which is both strange, but also gave me an idea. As I looked through the site relatively, you know, at this point presented to me relatively generic, like, oh, sure, it's, or, you know, it's organic and it's nice and it's you know, um, handmade and all that, which is awesome. Um, uh, not to be dismissive, but you know, so you need something to differentiate. What I thought was really intriguing here is that this person wrote back and said, like, I've been looking for a way to remove the callus from my daughter's division one rowing hands, right? And this grub work. Um, maybe that's an insight. You know, early customers often provide really valuable insights about what these sort of niche markets might be that you can go after. So maybe it is that, you know, again, sort of sports enthusiast, maybe there's a maybe there's an angle for um outdoor sports people or, or whatever. Uh, and as you explore that, I, I highly encourage you to explore that, particularly for companies like this, which again, very founder story. Here's the founder page, um, which uh, again, you know, nice photo of, uh, but uh, it doesn't explain, you know, who these people are, why they're doing this, you know, what they're doing it for. People want that and to get personal. So, these two companies, as well as this next one, Happies, um, which is a, um, uh, you're making a new dip. Uh, again, that's awesome. Uh, selling at a farmer's markets and, and sort of building from there. Um, you know, God bless. Uh, and, but I need to know, like, why am I buying this over whatever the stuff is that I get at the grocery store? Again, I'm buying that story. Um, so you need to give me one. Um, and, uh, and it can be something relatively standard, rolling the lines. Oh, when I, my child was born, I only wanted to feed her organic food, whatever. Um, uh, but that's where those, um, that's where those stories start. And so those three companies I put into that, um, founder bucket of the sort of founder story, personal story bucket as, as top importance. Um, but I would emphasize that all of you, um, could, uh, if you have a, um, a, a way to sell the founding story, like the why, um, you know especially VCs always want to know like, why the hell are you building this company? Um, because they want to know that when the going gets tough and it will, um, are you going to stick with it? Or are you really just here to make a buck? And if so, um, you know, you just might get distracted by the next shiny thing. Okay. So um, onwards. Um, so as you think through, and again, we're going to focus on this website, but as you think through the customer journey, 
each one of you is going to have a different one. Um, again, obviously something like, you know, happies or whatever, the journey might be that they heard about you at the farmer's market or they had your dip at a friend's house. Um, uh, maybe they, they, maybe they, they saw a blog post about it. Um, some of these other companies might be a completely different route. You might've had a webinar. There's some, you know, pretty uh, hardcore B2B companies on this call. Um, and so maybe it's a webinar. So you need to figure out where, and, and broadly I'd say that sort of splits into B2C, um, you know, consumer companies and business facing companies, um, how that awareness gets established. Um, and you need to sort of think through that. Um, but then there's always that learning phase about that. They want to learn more. They want to be reassured that the product they're buying is good. Um, uh, they end up on the website, which is why I highlighted that in red. And then also, obviously, once they become a customer, um, the, the, the website starts forming a different function, right? There's a retention, maybe an upsell opportunity. Um, uh, and so your website definitely needs to be targeted at the customer. I'll just sort of, uh, sort of drop that as well. Um, uh, and I didn't see a lot of this um, mistake made um, on, on the websites I reviewed, but it's not for the, you know, obviously it's not for your employees, it's not for your uh, uh, investors, um, it is for your customers. Um, but obviously all those people will read it and they want to know that you're, that you're, um, you know, they feel confident in your company. Uh, so they all have different motivations, but, but it should be a customer facing service. So I'm going to go through a, a, a small, like a couple minute detour here um, of landing page and website 101 design. Um, I'm not, you know, again, a marketer per se. I'm more like on the underlying messaging thing, but I would do want to brag about uh, this one guy, Harry. Um, and you, I highly encourage you guys to check out marketingexamples.com. Um, super smart. You, know, you can sign up for a newsletter and the like. He has lots of ideas um, that I won't get into here, but I do want to, um, he had a particularly smart idea around how to build um, uh, sort of a website. Um, in this case, he's talking about a landing page, but a lot of the same um, things hold. And again, he goes into the greater detail here, but I'm going to just sort of summarize it, right? So like, you have your title, boom, you want to explain that value you provide. There's different ways of doing that, but you want to be clear. And so first you need to figure out, well, what is the value I'm providing and to whom, right? Getting back to some of those original questions. It's like, who is the customer? What's their problem? How are you going to solve it? Um, then you're going to explain in the subtitle, like how you're going to create that value. Then you're going to want the user to visualize the value that they're going to get. You want to make it believable. You want to provide that social proof. You saw that on that earlier um, Talkspace um, website. And then obviously you want to make the next step um, easy to take. So in this case, right, ace the SAT with 10 minutes of studying a day, like that's where, you know, super clear. And then how are they going to do it? You know, here are the micro lessons. Um, get started for one. That's that next step. You have the social proof. Look, 700 users have given it a five out of five, right? Like, I feel confident already that these people are going to help me with my SAT. Um, another example um, here that I have, uh, you know, again, a smile I love for less than $3 a day. In this case, they provide all those photos or both the social proof as well as like the product example, right? All those beautiful teeth. Um, so uh, you want to make sure that you're going to really sort of clarify down. And, and again, it, it base around those, um, uh, you first have to figure out who the customer is and, and, and what the problem is that you're going to solve. He had this one other thing, which I thought was uh, quite good. Um, he's like, this is about the customer, the founder message, but it doesn't apply to your entire website, right? The flow is always kind of the same. It's like a pitch deck. Um, which is a, which is a two-way conversation with only one side talking. So you always need to figure out, you know, where the customer is, where the other side is and address them um, uh, empathetically. Uh, so anyways, in this case, right, you put yourself in the customer's shoes, you know, out of 12 million stores online, only 8% will sell um, in more than thousand products this year, right? So there you, you're like, you, you're feeling their pain. And then you explain their problem. Yep, it's easier to build a website, but you know people have the, the, the following problems. And then you're like, that's why we built this company in order to solve this problem for you. And then the happy ending, which again, in this case has sort of a bit of a social proof component. We've helped all these other stores like you solve that problem. Um, and it all boils down to this one idea um, everything on your website, you should read it to yourself and ask and every photo and ask, would this help me sell this if I met the customer in person? And, you know, generic photos of two people shaking hands, like, you know, you'd never show that to someone in person. So probably shouldn't be on your website. Um, ask yourself that as you're, as you're going through that website. Okay, so then onwards. So um, I'm going to go through a couple of others now uh, about the sort of websites and, and, and based on a couple of those thoughts we saw, uh, maybe you'll see it as well. Um, you know, here, uh, Pinpoint, it, I mean, again, it looks like it looks like a company well along um, was experienced has a good customers and case studies. I'm um, clearly they've done a lot. Um, but like, 
try pinpoint it's simple just log in like that tells me nothing about the problem that uh that that's being uh resolved i mean in the in this in the subhead transform your data into actionable information like we make advanced analytics easy like that's getting a lot closer to what this company does um so i would like to um uh, uh you know so i would say that's what should be um emphasized um uh, you know try pinpoint is, is is certainly not a selling point um, and then when I click on the watch demo, because obviously if I'm going to be seeing beautiful analytics, um, then I want to see some right away. I click on that and then I immediately just get to the um, sort of a, a, you know, a scheduling page and without sort of, you know, so sort of giving me that one extra step of, uh, you know, showing me some beautiful pictures of the types of output that this company um, I can produce off of my analytics. Um, and I also still don't know who it's really targeted at. When I scroll down, I, I like the idea. You offered some, some ideas of like, hey, here are some benefits I get. But the benefits themselves, like not that compelling. Like, wow, this has cubeless architecture. I don't even know what cubeless architecture is. I don't know how it's going to make my life better. I don't know how it's going to solve my business problem. Um, uh, so there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to um, sort of feel addressed as, as a customer. Um, there's some other pages where there's typos. I would just say, hey, you know, make sure that you know we eliminate the typos as as you go forward. Um, that doesn't um, that doesn't look that great. Um, and again, I would encourage you to look at some of these other companies that have done this. Um, so. Um, Tableau is obviously one of the market leaders in this space. Um, and you can kind of look through their website and like copy shamelessly, like, you know, their approach, at least the funnel, obviously not like the images and the text, but like the, the, the structure that they approach, uh, uh, they, they, uh, their approach. In this case, analytics, people love to use, right? Like, ah, okay, right. I hate using my uh, uh, analytics software. Wow. I, I would love to use this. And then it tells me how it's going to bring together data and empower me. And, and then, um, uh, and then um, as you go down, you now you start to see some, oh, those are beautiful visuals. Like, I'd like to have visuals like that, right? You're starting to um, kind of approach the problem from the customer perspective and sort of feel their pain and then present those solutions to it. Um, uh, Tableau does a nice job then of offering that social proof. Uh, oh, Charles Schwab uses them, Dubai airports, Whole Foods, et cetera. Um, these are all sort of things that are so, oh, okay, I'm not going to be the only schlub buying this product. I'm, you know, the only, you know, idiot who's going to buy this stuff. Um, all these other people, and if it's good enough for them, it's going to be good enough for me. So uh, you see how some of these other companies do it. Um, there's almost inevitably an example that you can find um, and, uh, and you can start to build uh, those, um, uh, the, those sort of fundamental pieces and get them straight in your, um, in your website. Uh, here's a company uh, called My Retreat. Um, their big thing is a chocolate mindfulness retreat. Uh, another company here on the call, um, and uh, and obviously a couple of things. I mean, first of all, the website um, needs some love. It looks like it's from 1999. You know, there's no need for that anymore. Um, there's a lot of really great you know sort of website builders. Um, so that that's one. But but but. Um, it, more importantly, um, I think that um, there's no information around what this uh, just chocolate mindfulness is. I mean, it's a really interesting story, and I dug into it a little bit. And they have uh, funding on, on I Fund Women. There's um, uh, there's a, like a funding around this, and uh, with some nice videos. Um, this is a great market, right? Like the idea of self care, especially remote self care in this difficult pandemic time, is actually like is great. Tons of people are raising money on it. Tons of people are, are building successful companies. Oh, you know, every yoga service is online. I mean, it's a hot market. Um, and so um, uh, I, I, I definitely encourage you to um, uh, so build that on, on that small, passionate following. If you, this is another one where the founder story um, starts becoming um, important. And I did see, I, to her credit, I will say that there is a bunch of like founder story already um, in some of the various materials, but it's not presented here front and center. And there's there's definitely an opportunity for us to um, uh, uh, to sort of present that better. What am I going to get? How does it solve my life? You know, how do how are people just like me? How have they um, sort of found their center, even if just for ten minutes, by um, by going on this uh, sort of virtual chocolate mindfulness retreat? So I think there's a, there's a lot that can be done here. Um, uh, again, to um, it's not going to be quite that same sell as you have uh, on some of those like more so sort of straightforward businessy things. It's a little bit more like a uh, like the dog treat company, um, but uh, uh, there's a lot to um, uh, there's a lot to to work on there. 
Um, kind of in a completely different frame, here is a, um, a B2B company. Um, the, the founder asked uh, before this webinar, hey, how can I use social media to pr promote brand awareness and stimulate sales demand? Um, and I would say, wait, hold on, time out. Um, you know, you know, what's the funnel? Like, who is the customer? Um, and where are they getting their information? And what actually is the sales funnel? And without knowing anything more about um, uh, this company than what I saw on the website, I'm going to guess that people aren't discovering, um, you know, how to reduce their social, uh, their, their, their engine emissions from their truck fleet, um, you know, through social media posts. Um, my guess is that the sales funnel is going to be totally different. Um, this is pretty deep tech. I think you're selling to manufacturers. Maybe you're selling to fleet owners. Um, there's probably a completely different sales uh, process. Um, and maybe this is, you know, case studies, webinars. I bet there's niche press that you could go after. Again, it sounds, it sounds like an amazing technology, um, but it's a pretty long sales cycle. Um, and you need to know, you know, who is the buyer even within, if you're like, you've identified, oh, it's a truck fleet company, you know, who within that is going to be the, the decider uh, or the person that you're going to get interested, who's then going to have to pitch it to the, 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 whoever, the VP of something. Um, you really want to sort of figure that out and then figure out, okay, then what are the pieces that I need to give to attract that person, make it clear that I've understood his problems or her problems, um, give them the tools they need in order to be successful within their organization and make it very clear how their benefits are going to be, um, how both that person in that job is going to be more successful and their company as a whole is going to be more successful. What are the you know, what are the key metrics that uh, your product improves um, that, that they would keep track of? So again, if you're, um, some might be, you know, dog treats heavily Instagram. My guess is that this is not going to be, you know, inst you know, incidental Instagram at best. Um, so those are, that starts to think about the, the channels and how you're going to use it. Here's another cool thing. Um, I at first, when I, at first glance, I looked at this, I thought this was some like, you know, secret Navy SEAL thing, uh, you know, advanced mission planning assessment and optimization, you know, for safely automating, you know, autonomous operations. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go behind enemy lines here. Um, and in fact, um, it's not, it's, I mean, I, I don't know if it's cooler or less cool, but it's, um, uh, you know, really sounds incredibly valuable, right? So this is now um, specific um, uh, ways of doing three, complex 3D mapping um, of various terrains so that you can have autonomous vehicles do uh, either reconnaissance or in the case of agriculture, I guess, sort of, you know, so sort of apply, you know, um, you know, crop medicine or whatever. Um, you can inspect, you know, offshore oil rigs, you know, deliver packages, right? Super cool. Um, so, but again, I would say um, you, if you have this sort of LIDAR, um, you know, sort of complex mapping customer, uh, or service, you know, really figure out who is the customer. And even within that, I mean, I, I get that there's here's four broad industry verticals, but figure out who within that is going to be the customer. Um, is it, is it, um, you know, has it hospitals? And if so, what kind of hospitals, if it's oil rigs, like that's great, but like, you know, a lot, there's also like a vast, um, you know, some, um, group of customers that have, uh, you know, companies within that that have um, uh, sort of oil rig management service companies and the likes. So like really figure out who your customer is in, figure out who that, um, who's going to do the deciding, figure out that sales cycle. And then also I see further down on the website, uh, you know, talked about um, that you plan 207 missions, you know, almost 400 flight hours. I'm sure there's some great stories to tell um, and, and some case studies to write. Um, and so I think that, again, there's just like a, there's a tremendous opportunity here and it's just not being presented um, in the in the right way. So what all this gets me to is that, um, you know, communications, it often feels like, oh, like now that I've done the company, like I need to just like talk about it. And, and, and one of my most important takeaways from today's talk is that I want you to understand that um, uh, the. Um, you know, communications is strategy. As you start to answer those questions and you start to figure out what is, um, uh, what are we going to talk about? You realize that, oh, well, like, well, who am I talking to? And it is a circular loop to, um, uh, and a feedback loop between your potential customers, your investors, your, um, uh, uh, even your internal communications. You're going to realize that as you figure out your communications, it's going to affect your strategy and your, obviously your strategy affects your communications. So, um, uh, I, it's awesome that you guys are take, paying attention at, um, at communications at this early stage, but don't think about it just like, oh, it's like now that I've got this engine, I just need to like put stuff in. Pouring, you know, sand into a broken funnel is just going to leak out all over the place. You want to make sure that your funnel is tight and your funnel is ultimately is a strategic decision. 
Um, so I, with that in mind, I'm going to go uh, to the next one. Um, so this is now um, AccuGPS in ways maybe similar to that other trucking company, at least in terms of the industry. Um, the homepage um, is, uh, you know, is, is, you know, that your FMCSA certified, I don't even know what that is, that you can pre-configure devices, I doubt is going to be your sort of core selling proposition. Um, I don't even know what it is you do yet. Um, uh, again, uh, as I dig th further on the site, it becomes clear that it's a really, you know, exciting technology not being presented to me that way on the, on the homepage. Um, and especially as I scroll down here, your business partners, one partner mentioned in the rest of the page is orange, um, you know, sending all the wrong messages, obviously. Um, now, as you start to dig in, I start to get it, right? There's like a geo fencing and, and, and sort of fleet management via GPS. There's a whole dashboard. Like, I don't know anything about this market, but like, boy, it sounds exciting. If I could, if I had a hundred trucks and I could see exactly where they are and what's going on. In fact, this next page, um, almost strikes me as a much better homepage. Um, a reliable intuitive fleet management system at least explains to me what you do. And I see a pretty picture of like, you know, dots on a, on a map. I'm like, I get it. Um, I want to know exactly what's going on with all my trucks at any point as well. Um, and so, uh, and, and then the asset um, tracking page starts to give me some of those benefits. Um, but again, I want to understand who is your customer, um, uh, you know, so break that down for me. Um, and again, who within that company is the customer and what are the problems that they're facing with today? And what are those relatives that is that, you know, is theft reduction or like, is that a big one? There's a small one. Is it really some status, status report? Is it measuring, you know, fuel usage, I mean, who knows, or theft of the, um, from the, you know, kind of a laziness or what a truck driver, you know, whatever, um, uh, sort of oversight, is that the thing? So you have to explain what, who's the, what the problem is, and then um, how you're going to solve the problem so that their boss will love them, right? So uh, that's some of that stuff that I find buried in, in so many of your websites. Okay, so now you've got um, the, uh, the uh, talked about some of those core pieces. So now I wanna go through a little bit more around uh, sort of starting to now face the outside world and talk about how you're going to uh, get some of that message out there. Um, and, and, and here, you know, a couple of things. First of all, who are the people that you're talking to? Um, and, you know, sometimes even customers needs to be broken down into different uh, groups. Uh, certainly investors, your, your employees, um, your peer group, et cetera, are gonna be uh, different constituencies. Um, talk about tar the role of targeting, uh, the role of like, um, you know, press releases. Everyone always talks about, oh, should I put out a press release? And I'll talk to you about what I think the benefit of those is. Um, and then I'm gonna address a little bit about how communications, you should think about separating communications from marketing. So the first is like, you know, really figuring out what, who those customers are and what they, how you're going to reach them and like why they're going to care. Like what are their needs that you're going to, um, uh, uh, that you're going to address, right? So not to spend too much time, but you got your customers, right? Like, how's this going to make my life better? Why is my problem going to get solved, right? Like, how are you going to make me richer as an investor, right? For an employee, like, why is this such an awesome place to work for industry peers? Like, why is this going to make me look smart at my job or, uh, you know, that fear of being left behind? Like, how am I going to be um, uh, uh, sort of, you know, seem um, uh, smart? And then obviously you look for each one. You're going to have to look for industry publications um, and that how you're going to target them. And sometimes like, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'd love to be in the New York Times. You know, and yeah, that's great, but that's super general interest. And sometimes that's the right thing, but oftentimes um, it's it's given the amount of effort you might need to get into it and, and, and the hoops you're gonna have to jump through and the size of the ultimate mention you're gonna get um, is actually not really gonna move the needle. You're gonna do far better on, uh, on, a, on a far um, sort of tighter uh, uh, targeting of the actual customer that you're trying to reach. Just to kind of take, you know, I just spent a few minutes trying to think like, okay, if I'm AccuGPS, um, you know, who am I going to uh, go after? Well, there's trucking companies. I assume these are different from for fleet owners, um, right? So if I'm uh, uh, you know, obviously take something large like UPS, um, obviously they're you know, a massive fleet, all privately owned versus trucking companies that are you know, sort of hauling strawberries back and forth from California. Um, and uh, and there, I'm sure there's there's sort of other ways to break it down within them. Um, some people are probably not going to care at all about, you know, sort of GPS. Other people are going to care greatly about it. Um, obviously, then there's the industry and all the associations around that that can do a great job of promoting your solution. Um, 
there's all these different things of what they read, right? There's conference, there's the moving and storage conference, which I don't know, may or may not be a great place to reach trucking companies, but that certainly might be a different place than where, you know, the, where the fleet owners go, right? Or that are all reading fleet owner magazine, which is actually something that exists that I discovered after Googling it. Um, you know, they all want different things, right? Where like the industry is going to want something different from what um, uh, sort of trucking companies and fleet owners want. Um, and even within trucker companies and fleet owners, they might sort of be wanting different things. So be very clear about who you're going after. Um, and, 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 and especially for you guys, you know, think about, you know, separating your different customers. Um, obviously, you know, with food, for example, wholesale customers, if you're going to sell your dog bones to Costco, um, totally different story than if you're obviously selling with the farmer's market. Um, and you're going to have to talk about different um, sort of benefits and attributes of your product. Um, the second one, and it's sort of as a build on from this previous point, um, it bears repeating, uh, you know, I, you know, it's like, I was working with a cl client recently that was like, oh, you know, obviously, you know, New York Times would be great. And we realized that Lawn and Garden magazine would actually be a way better target, easier to get into and going to reach your target constituency much more appropriately. So um, it's a little bit, if any of you have dealt with SEO at all, like you're an SEO, you're always trying to figure out, you know, the keywords. Um, and obviously there's the well-known keywords and then there's the long tail keywords uh, that have a lot less traffic, but are more targeted. And you're always trying to find that balance. You're trying to find that place where um, you'll get relatively large bang for the buck. Um, and so often you're going to have um, uh, things that are, um, uh, you're going to realize that it's much smaller to publications and websites and blogs and email newsletters are going to have a far bigger impact on your business than the big sort of sexy, oh, I want to be in TechCrunch or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, right? Like that sort of comes later, generally speaking. Um, so here is uh, uh, one that... Um, uh, Brella was was a website or a company here on the call. They do this cool thing. They build sort of they combined a, a poncho with a with a rain jacket, right, to make sort of a freer of movement. Um, and what um, and and I thought I had I didn't mention them earlier. I forget if I mentioned later, but um, they uh, they had uh, you know Hugh wants to generate more sales. And I, and I think that um, in many ways, the answer is buried in his website already. Um, he, he has all these um, testimonials from outdoor enthusiasts who are saying, hey, they love the fact that they can fly fish with this, um, with this jacket on. Um, they can, um, you know, whatever it is, uh, uh, sort of go hunting or, 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 or kayaking, right, with, these, um, uh, with, this, with this product on, as opposed to like wearing a, a constrictive regular jacket. Well, that's where the press is that you're going to want to go after. If that's your market, like that's who you go after. And I think he'd given away some uh, some product to some of these uh, publications, which I list here. But that's what you want. Like Great Lakes Angler Magazine would be an awesome place to like talk about this. Um, I don't know whether this like, you know, Team USA um, thing on the homepage is really that smart. Probably not. Again, you want to talk about, um, you want to talk about the, um, uh, the that's, um, uh, you want to talk about the, the 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 main sort of target, right? This is where you have a hunter or a fisher or something like that, or a kayaker on your on your homepage because that's the benefit that you're trying to sell. Um, okay, so uh, with that, I want to shift gears for one second and talk about um, uh, sort of um, press releases and the like. Everyone always talks about that uh, and asks, you know, um, company milestones and funding announcements are going to be the main two things, right? So um, they have. Um, uh, so you, you get a new board member, obviously you raise money, uh, you launch a new product, you launch a new product line, uh, you announce a new partnership. Um, so what I think of those generally speaking is what well, I think of them as pocket litter. Um, and pocket litter is what, uh, it's an old spy term. It's what spies kept in their pocket to substantiate their cover story in case they were arrested, right? So they, oh, I have a, you know, a, a receipt from the parking garage, which proves I was, you know, wherever. Um, and, and that's sort of what you should think about as, as press releases and just putting them out there. Um, if you put out a press release and someone Googles your company name later, they will find that and they'll be like, oh, like they actually did have a partnership with so-and-so or they raised some money or they hired someone impressive sounding to be uh, you know, on their advisory board or whatever. Um, it, it sort of gives them a proof point that like, yes, in fact, you're a real company and you did it and you, there's a series of them and they can kind of see the progression. Oh, they announced this product and they announced that product. But by themselves, they're not going to, uh, you know, get a whole lot of um, of coverage. Uh, but again, they 
they do have some uh, they do have some benefit. Obviously, as you start getting towards, um, you know, if you have a substantial announcement, right? Like I'm putting together one right now where a startup is partnering with, uh, you know, a global financial bank, um, and suddenly, like, just the name of that global financial bank is going to be very influential uh, in getting coverage for the startup that I'm working with. Uh, and obviously, if you get to unicorn or your uh, status, right, your fundraising round, or you're going to launch, you know, an IPO or a SPAC, um, you know, these things start to get, um, you know, sort of sexy in their own right. Um, and, and that's where sort of a press release will have meaning. Um, but until that point, you know, enjoy the pocket litter aspect. It's not bad. Um, and uh, uh, but but, you know, so treat it as such. Um, and then a lot of people also confuse communications and marketing or don't know exactly where that um, uh, sort of where the where the line should be drawn. And I just want to give you a little sort of framework for thinking about it. Um, so the key messaging on your site, uh, right, the very first one is like that's a communications question in terms of like core messaging, like who are we, what do we do and what do, who do we do it for? Um, marketing then can come in and figure out like, oh, well, this is the like the person's you know, photo you should have, or this is the testimonial, or this is how to phrase that um, core message that we're trying to sell, right? That sort of gets into the marketing side, but there's a real sort of kind of, uh, uh, there's a core communications piece that happens first. Um, getting your news and message onto other sites. So this is like, you know, earned media, that's PR. Um, building in, um, uh, sort of getting articles on other websites to lure visitors to your site um, is an SEO thing, which is, can be a combination of, 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 of communications and marketing. And then obviously buying your message elsewhere, right? Like that's where you get into classic, um, that's where you get classic um, sort of marketing. So a lot of this communication, what I really want you to leave you with right now and for, from the today's message is that like some of those fundamental messages, like you can't build a sturdy house until you've got like straight lumber. Uh, you've got to figure that stuff out first. And then you start to, um, uh, uh, you know, then you can start, you know, building, building the house and getting all fancy with it. But don't start thinking about the turrets until you've got the foundation built well. Once you've got those foundations built well, I'm going to leave you with a couple of thoughts about like how to think about like how to get more coverage about the product that you have, which is so awesome, right? So first, I'm going to, you know, encourage you to think like a journalist, like look at it from their perspective. Talk about jujitsu, which is basically um, sort of turning turning the power of your opponent against themselves, right? So using uh, existing uh, kind of leverage uh, in the marketplace in the of ideas to like further your company. Talk about trends and data, um, and and you know the the under, the underlying thing is that every startup, its sort of fundamental goal is to look bigger than it is, right? Like to act bigger than it is, to always be one step larger than it is. And in order to do that, you need to have some of these little tricks up your sleeve so that you can, um, you know, get coverage effectively that you can, you know, quote unquote, don't deserve yet. Um, so the one, so think like a journalist, right? Like I, I'm just giving one example. Um, so the fetch dog treats, I noticed that they had this sort of Buffalo, um, uh, so bills thing. And obviously the Buffalo bills did great this year, right? They got to the championship in who knows how many years for the first time. Um, and, uh, and you have these like, so bills thing, I mean, the hometown dog treat, I mean, could have been a great opportunity to get coverage just because there's the Super Bowl thing happening. Um, and, uh, so it's a little bit of jujitsu as well, almost, but, uh, if you're thinking like a journalist and you think like a, you know, think in the headline um, that you might get out of the coverage you'd receive. Um, you know, there'd, there'd be a, you could imagine selling, you know, 10,000 bucks of, you know, dog treats for, you know, Bills fans who are getting ready for the big game. You imagine the Buffalo News doing a cute story on it because, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of cute. Like hometown, hometown dog treat company, you know, makes, um, you know, is a rooting for the home team. And, you know, you could sort of work on that. Or maybe you could even turn it bigger. What if you then, you know, then and smuggle them into Kansas City and, you know, almost sort of create a little bit of a, uh, 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 you know, sort of a, uh, you know, uh, you know, pregame kind of excitement about, uh, you know, suddenly all this Go Bills stuff is like, you know, on sale in in, in Kansas City. Uh, you know, maybe there's ways that you can do it. So, that, so think like what a journalist is always thinking for, uh, thinking of, right? They want the story that people are going to click on and like and forward. That's what's going to make them look good. So give them something that they can, um, that they can talk about. Did the jujitsu in a way that was the you know previous example as well, like um, about this idea of uh, you know the, the upcoming uh, game that 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 the hometown team is going to be in. Um, there's obviously bigger things as well, both that mindfulness, the the the, the chocolate therapy, as well as the health on your time. I mean, again, it's like it's a huge issue these days. Um, 
and uh, about about you know remote health and remote um, well being and 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 keeping your sanity in this crazy time, et cetera. So um, lots of things to build on. Research who's writing those stories and um, uh, and 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 target them with individual messages. Don't forget. There's no such thing as the New York Times wrote about or any other publication, right? It's like even within the New York Times as an organization as large as that, you know, if 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 you're going to get like health on your time covered by the New York Times, like I guarantee you if you start looking into it, there's about five journalists that actually would who write for the Times that actually would cover the subject. Find out who they are, target them individually. They're people too. There is no such thing as this like organization at large. Um, if you start to read the coverage about your industry or about your customer group, you're going to discover it's much smaller than you think. Um, and those are the people that you have to reach out to individually, build relationships with them and, uh, uh, and, and sort of give them what they need. That the, uh, one of the things they need, trend rule of three, everything is, um, it comes in threes. Like as soon as you have three things of something, it's a trend. I just spent five minutes Googling this, right? Like, oh, rubbery galoshes, sturdy pants and functional bags. Like, you know, is this tr latest trend in menswear gardening? Like, you know, boom, there's a story. And like, you'd click on that. You're like, oh my gosh, gardening is a menswear trend. Like, that's cool. Um, and so you can totally imagine, you know, it's a thumb stopper, right? In the, sort of in the social media scrolling sense, you know, how to dress for the apocalypse. Well, if there's three movies that this, um, this the guy could find out about, um, uh, you know, where there's end of day films and how they dress, like suddenly he's got a trend story about it. And so if you can find other companies that are doing that, if there's a reason why what you're doing, there's a group of you, maybe hopefully not direct competitors, but that are all trying to solve, you know, the you know, truck, trucking issues or organic dog treats or, you know, uh, in garage delivery services, right? Um, there's, there's something that you can do. Data is another one. Um, not all of you will be generating data, but I highly encourage you to, uh, to, 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 to think about that. If you do generate data, like Veravend came to mind as like would be valuable. If you start getting tons of companies signing up, you're going to have a ton of interesting data. You can then aggregate it. You obviously anonymize it, but suddenly you've got stories you can tell. Um, you know, here's, um, uh, who is it? Um, uh, you know, Bing managed to insert themselves into Valentine's Day by like, you know, talking about statistics um, about that. Um, I think Square, um, the, 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 the um, you know, the payment device, um, you know, got itself, you know, issued a coffee report because they have all this like sales point of sales data. If you get anything data related numbers, everyone loves that stuff. Journalists love it. If you, if your company generates it, use it. Um, and then one of you wrote, you know, they're saying, hey, you know, hey, what, you know, what are my, you know, what's my ROI going to be on all this stuff? And the point is, like, it's kind of hard to calculate. Um, there's a tool called Help a Reporter Out. Um, you can Google that. Um, you can be a, you can be an expert, and um, I, I, I highly recommend that you can kind of follow that. It can get you a little overwhelming, but every once in a while, someone will say, like, hey, I'm doing an article on you know, whatever, and it might be like that it happens to be upstate New York, or it happens to be in the industry that you're in, and they're looking for an expert, and you can get yourself quoted that way. Um, there's these tools, Muckrack, Meltwater, Incision, that um, allow you to monitor stuff. This might be ahead of, you know, where a lot of you guys are at, because these um, subscriptions get pretty pricey, but you can start to monitor that. And then obviously, you can go to outside, you know, help people like me, or, you know, there's a million PR companies and message, you know, communications people. So um, with, a, with, with, the, with the grand total of one minute remaining, and I'm happy to stick around a little bit if you have time, um, then uh, I encourage you to reach out. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to open up the floor at this point. I don't know, we can see, is there, is there something in the, in the chat? Um, there was one question earlier. It says, what is an example of a good website that uh, communicate well? Good website okay. that communicate well. A website that communicates well? Well, I mean, okay. So first of all, I would say that um, it really depends on which industry you're in because they're going to be quite different. Uh, I mean, some of them, uh, obviously, if you look at some of the biggest apps that are out there, they're, they're, they literally just have a landing page and say like, well, download the app. Um, and those, those do very well. Um, I would strongly encourage you to look at companies that are in the industry that you're in, um, successful companies, even if they're adjacent industries. Again, my example earlier of Tableau 
low if you're looking if you're a data analytics provider like look at the company that's raised 100 gazillion dollars and like has a million customers um they probably put an awful lot of money into figuring out how to to optimize their messaging um and their website and the flow of that website um so look at that um look at uh, you know uh, uh whoever is in in your industry um i would i encourage you to go to marketing examples dot com as well um that's 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 this this friend of mine harry um who does um uh uh you sort of really kind of breaks that down as well in terms of like how to do that structuring um so i would i would i would encourage you to look around and um you know feel f get freely inspired by uh by by other people who have already you know trod the same path that you're on Hi, Otto. I have a question from Empower, Simone from Empower. Yeah, hi. Um, just a quick question. Uh, would you prefer, like, for our for our purpose, because there's three of us, um, would you prefer a collective founder story or an individual? Do you think it would be too much to do an individual story, or would it be better to be collective? That's a good question. My answer would be, it depends. I want there to be one story. And that story could include the three of you. It could be one of you. Um, I don't want three. I don't think I'd want three like separate stories that is so I like, you know, whose product am I then buying, right? Like I want there to be a story. Is it three girlfriends? They got together and like, here's our story. That's my hunch of how it would be. Then you can obviously talk about the three of you and maybe each one of you have a, you know, different angle. Like you came at it from, I don't know, like a health perspective and, and your friend came at it because, you know, who knows what, um, she's trying to help her daughter. And um, so there's different ways of doing that. But so I, I love the idea of, you know, sort of women getting together and doing stuff. That's how like most of the things in the world happen to begin with. Um, and if you can tell that story um, in, 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 in your product, I think that that's already that that's a valuable thing to go with um, as long as you can tie them all together. Thank you. There was another question in the chat. It says, um, what about advice on social media? What can what kind of advice can you give um, for people that are looking to expand their social media? Yep, that's great. So um, it's getting a little bit past my expertise level, like you know, really how to do you know how to get ten thousand or one hundred thousand Instagram followers and and the and the like. Um, I one thing that um, I, so the general rule that I follow though is that. First of all, go out and find places where the audience, your audience already is. It's hard to build a service like from scratch just by saying like, I'm going to post something on my Instagram every day and I've got 112 followers and I'm just going to keep posting and pumping it out there. And over time, like it'll build like, yeah, that's true. Um, but you'll probably find that you're going to be much better off if you go out and find like whatever your customer base is, whoever you think is going to be the buyer of your products, like go out and find out where they're already hanging out. Chances are you can find a Facebook group, an Instagram uh, page. There's other places where they already are and you can get involved in the conversation there and maybe and start, pro, you know, you can obviously there's various um, sort of growth hacking ways of, of, of sort of luring some of those people over, but you can also just start getting involved in that conversation. You can start, maybe you can um, build a partnership with the person who runs that. Um, I'm, I'm working on one of those right now where there's all these small businesses, somebody who's built 30,000 Instagram followers, developing you know, sort of small business leaders. And, and this company I'm working with, um, they, they offer a service for small business uh, owners. And so, hey, maybe we can do a partnership. And the, the idea is like, um, uh, the person who has these 30,000 small business um, followers on their Instagram page is going to do uh, kind of a, 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 um, a couple of series of posts that happen to you know, sort of recommend our service as part of a larger um, kind of informational announcement. And then in return, we're going to run some ads on Facebook um, that promote her Instagram feed, right? So those kinds of partnerships where you go where those people already are and you start figuring out how you can add value to those existing networks, you can start to get your word out through those. And obviously over time, you wanna start luring them to come straight to you. Um, but you're gonna find that it's gonna be far more efficient um, to uh, to fish where the fish already are that rather than just like, you know, keep building your own little pond and hoping that the fish will, you know, magically find you over time. I had a quick question. 
Yeah. So, so for our startup, we're targeting the relationship wellness market. The main problem we're solving is relationship failure, but because there's such a stigma around that, we try not to use relationship failure in our marketing. We try to focus on more of the proactive approach, which is relationship wellness, and talk about the benefits. Um, just because people have a negative reaction to seeing statistics about relationship failure. So it's a interesting problem where we don't want to... Um, our exact problem that we're solving, we don't really want to state, but then we also want to hit a strong enough pain point that the user downloads the app. So in that case, um, what do you recommend when your your problem statement can't exactly met, uh, match your messaging? Well, great question. I mean, and I, my first one would be, I think you're absolutely right. Like, I mean, relationship failure um, is probably not the right way to do it. And I think relationship wellness is. I mean, I think that using euphemisms um, for the problem that you're addressing in this particular case, I think is, is, is more than reasonable. Um, you uh, can still get the message across as to what, when you talk about wellness, like who are you providing, right? You can have testimonials from, you know, Susie, who is like, you know, I, I don't know, again, know which relationship you're talking about, just to make it up, right? Like, oh, and like my, my boyfriend and I, we broke up and, you know, it was awful, but then I found this and, and these are, the, pro these are the, the, the problems I was having. And then this service like provided me the opportunity to sort of, um, you know, get myself, you know, get it all together again. And um, uh, so is, if you can clearly let your customers see themselves in the testimonials you provide, you can use that social proof which is, wow, there's a lot of people already trusting this company, so maybe I can trust them as well. You can combine that social proof together with um, the sort of uh, allowing them to project themselves into um, the people that you're, uh, that, you're, that you're highlighting on your website. So uh, those, those testimonials in that case, I think can do a lot of the heavy lifting of getting clearly the message across for the types of relationship failures you're trying to address. And I'm sure there's some that you are, and maybe there's some that you aren't. Um, so you can, you can sort of um, add a lot of color there um, while staying on the, in the broader theme, you know, talk about wellness and I don't know, whatever emotional centering or whatever the phrase is that you end up with that you find is the, uh, is the right way to message it at a high level. Okay, great. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or ask questions in the chat box. Okay, um, well, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you very much, Otto, for this amazing presentation. Um, I will uh, reach out to everybody with the recording of this webinar and as well as Otto's contact information if you have any follow-up questions for Otto. Um, please let me know. And uh, thank you all again for attending. Awesome. Thank you all. You've been great. I appreciate all you getting in van, uh, information in advance as well. So I can help put this together. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks. everybody.